Good morning, good evening, and good night, everybody. My name is Sarah, and today we're doing another book tag. I feel like I'm doing too many of those recently. Maybe, maybe I should lean off, but I really wanted to do this one. Today we're doing the Tangle book tag, and I picked this out because stuck inside at the moment watching a lot of Disney Plus, and Tangle just so happens to be one of my favorite Disney movies, specifically the, um, the lantern scene. That's like, I, I'm in love with that scene. And so I've been thinking about it a lot recently, and luckily there's a book tag out there about my favorite Disney, one of, one of my favorite Disney movies, so why not do it while this is a relevant topic to talk about? Now there's quite a number of questions on this tag, so with that all being said, let's dive on in. Question number one of Rapunzel. Name a book with a badass heroine. I pick Sabrielle. Sabrielle is a really old classic fantasy book. Our main character is like the daughter of death or the daughter of the world's greatest necromancer. A little bit unclear. When her father goes missing, she has to take over the title and lead the dead into the afterlife because in this world, if you don't go past a certain number of gates in the afterlife, you have the ability to come back to life. So that's really awesome. That's really amazing. And her whole journey of trying to find her father, like has her father die? Can death die? It's great. It's amazing. This is actually the only book that focuses on our main character, Sabrielle. The other books kind of follow other generations of this bloodline of like great and amazing necromancers who may or may not be the representation of death. It's just awesome. And again, it's really old classic fantasy, but our main character doesn't read like that classic female. She reads more like, this is my job and this is what I'm doing. And it, I love it. Question number two, Flynn Rider, name a book with a swoon-worthy character. Now, I had a very hard time picking a book for this because I, I don't understand what it means to swoon over someone. I don't like that. I don't do that. My brain doesn't like malfunction when I see an attractive person. So I actually had to go like based off of the text, like who is described as very attractive. And I picked Achilles from the Song of Achilles. This book is the love story between Achilles and Patroclus and it's all told in Patroclus's point of view. So we get to see a lot of him just falling for Achilles and he is constantly described as incredibly attractive. So based off of that information, I assume Achilles is very swoon worthy. I mean, I guess also Patroclus would count for this because Achilles is often talking about Patroclus to Patroclus. It's like, oh yes, you're, you're very attractive or however relationships go. I don't, I've, I've never quite understood relationships, but I think this is one of the cutest and best written and I love it so much. This is like my OTP. This is one of my favorite books of the year so far and I love it and I highly recommend it. And also just looking at history and how they're portrayed. Like, yes, this is this is their entire lives, you guys. So it's heartbreaking and amazing. Question number three, Eugene. What is a book with a character you didn't think you were going to love? I picked Monty from The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. I have kind of mixed feelings about this book, mainly because it kind of went from, oh, look at this adventure of us throughout Europe to alchemy to alchemy borderlining on magic and it, 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 ignoring ignoring that I absolutely loved the cast of characters in this book I didn't think I was going to like Monty in the first half of the book because he was just he was that kind of like rich guy who was sheltered he doesn't quite understand the consequences of his own actions and this book really it teaches him to understand the consequences of his own actions and I love it so much you do get a lot of backstory of why he is the way he is and it's I'm not saying that's a justifier but it's like very interesting to see how he became what we first met him as and then watching him develop into a person who is just amazing and you can't help but love is great like I mentioned before, this is the story of the Monty siblings plus their best friend Percy as they go on an adventure throughout Europe and they cause so much disaster and they end up going like on the run and it's just great and amazing and very hilarious. Some of the characters are a little bit annoying in the beginning, but trust me, you learn to love all of them. Question number four, Mother Gothel. What is a book with an amazing villain? Now, not many of my books have really amazing villains that I can just point to and say, yes, that. Because a lot of my books don't have a traditional villain. Like a lot of them are just versus a concept or versus an organization. But that being said, who is a good boy from the Welcome to Night Vale transcripts uh, volume four? This volume actually contains two separate arcs and I'm specifically talking about the second arc, the one that it, this is named after, what the cover art is. Who is a good boy in Welcome to Night Vale is an arc that basically a beagle comes to town and everyone's like, oh, what a cute and adorable good boy you are. And then slowly that concept gets turned into horror because that is what Night Vale specializes. And it, it takes the mundane, it makes it terrifying, it takes it terrifying, it makes it mundane. So a beagle is the enemy in this arc of the story. And it is, 
it is the most terrifying. Like, I have never been scared reading a book before. I've never been scared listening to a podcast before. Both times, like, even, even when I was consuming this for the second time, because I listened to the podcast, and then I bought the book, and then I read the book, and it, both times, I got scared. Like, guys, if you want a good horror novel, like, the first introduction to horror, this is kind of, it's a, it's weird fantasy. Like, it's, urban fantasy and horror and just it's it's a great and amazing genre mixer and if you want to get into it I highly recommend the podcast because it's all told in the point of view of the radio station so you get to hear the town's news as everything that happens in Night Vale and this I the beagle the beagle is the most terrifying villain I've ever met in a book and in the podcast and in general and I, I can't stop talking about Night Vale. Question number five Maximus and Pascal what is a book with amazing side cast? I picked Howl's Moving Castle, I picked The Fire Demon and The Apprentice Wizard. Now, once again, this is the book that inspired the Studio Ghibli movie. It's a classic, but the book is, it's the same up until the second half. The war doesn't exist in the book, so it's all about Howl's backstory. But you fall in love with the cast of characters. This is the story of Sophie, as she is cursed to look like an 80-year-old woman, and so she kind of just wanders into the unknown and stumbles into Howl's moving castle in hopes of him being the one to break her curse. However, she can't tell Howl that she is cursed. So that's fun. She ends up just staying there as a housemaid, and you get to see the cast of characters. You get to see the little fire demon who I'm just in love with, and then you get to see the little apprentice wizard as he's like, he's trying, he's trying so hard, and I love them all so much. And so yes, I can't, I can't help but be in love with this book and all the characters in it. And I, I really want like a little keychain of, of all the characters, but I can't exactly buy that at the moment. But yeah, the fire demon is named Calcifer, and the apprentice is named Michael, and they're adorable, and I love them. Question number six, when will my life begin? What is a book you've been anticipating? So really, my answer has been the entire Shadow of the Fox trilogy. This is one of the only books I've ever pre-ordered, especially, like, it's the first book in a series that I've ever pre-ordered. I did that mainly because, like, if you did that, you got a signed copy. I just hit myself in the face here. But as, like, soon as I started reading this, I knew it was going to be one of my favorites. And finally, finally... The last book just came out and I'm currently working my way through this and I'm so excited and I'm just, this series in general, there's three books, I only pulled out two for this conversation, but I absolutely love this series and I'm, I was so excited when it came out and this is like the only book I've been really anticipating recently. Question number seven, Mother's Knows Best. What is a book that you gave a chance because someone recommended it to you? I picked Red, White, and Royal Blue for this question. This is a romance book. This is a book that's based in a very political setting. It is the love story between the son of America's first female president and the Prince of England. So, you know, that's adorable and amazing. However, I do not like romance and I despise political based stories in any of my books. And yet this one is perfect and amazing and I loved it so much. There is a huge problem I have with it near the ending. I do plan on making a video on that in June. But despite all that, I did absolutely love this book so much. And I only read it because of how much people were recommending it to me over on BookTube and Bookstagram. Just like anyone who was reading was saying this was the book to read. I gave it a chance despite the fact that it was nothing I ever had any interest in. And I, of course, I loved it. Question number eight, The Snuggly Duckling. What is a book with an anti-hero in it? I picked Renegades. This is the most uh, anti-hero of anti-hero books. This is a story about a society where our superpowers have risen up. 20 years ago, there was an age of anarchy where people with powers overthrew everyone without powers. And then one day the heroes came around and overthrew the villains. And our main character is the niece of the lead villain. And the thing is, though, she is sent to go infiltrate the hero society she is sent in as a spy, and she slowly starts to fall in love with the son of the two greatest superheroes, who are husbands, by the way, they're adorable, and there's also, like, a subplot of their love story, and it's like, very cute, it's very queer, and she ends up sort of, like, becoming this grey, neutral, anti-hero sort of villain, but sort of not. She's trying to find her place in the story, and I am, I'm in love with that third path. I am in love with the idea of, like, not a hero, not a villain, make it my own way. And so that's very much what she is embodies. And in my mind, that is what an anti-hero is. Everyone kind of has their own opinion on what an anti-hero is. Most people just default to Deadpool, which is, like, doing bad things for good reasons, which... I sort of get, but I sort of don't, but I really do think Nova, our main character in this book, is a very good definition of an anti-hero who isn't Deadpool. Question number nine, I've got a dream. What is a book that's inspired you? I picked The Secret, The Treasure Hunts. Now, 
Uh, this sort of counts for this, but sort of doesn't. This is a book about a real life treasure hunt. In this book, there are riddles and there are pictures. And basically, you solve the riddle, you correlate it to a picture, and you find a gemstone out there. It's somewhere in the world, somewhere in 12 different parks in the US, there are hidden gems just buried in the ground in a casket. If you guys want a good description of what this is, I highly recommend Expedition Unknown. They did like three episodes on the stuff and they ended up finding one of the gems, which I am, I am so obsessed with idea of treasure hunt and like going out there and finding a treasure. I think, I think the closest one to me is in Golden Gate Park, which is not close at all, but I mean, if I can go there once quarantine's over, I, I wanna, I wanna go f try and find a hidden treasure buried out there in the world. Like there's actual buried treasure and I, I just, I just want it to be there. I'm, I'm like, I own the book. I, of course, I left it in my college when I got kicked out, but I want to go on the treasure hunt so bad. I was deciphering the riddles. I was trying to like, does this mean this? And like, this could mean this, like, pavilion, and this could mean this statue, and it's like, it's pointing in directions, and like, the picture has a map in it, and I got a little bit obsessed for a little too long, and so I, I want to do it. I want to go find a gemstone one day. <laughs> Question number 10, I see the light. What is a book that changed your perspective on an issue? Now, again, I, I don't really have an answer for this question that counts. I kind of, I had to change the question a little bit and that's like just change my perspective on something. So I picked Reflections. This is a Twisted Tale story. First of all, I wasn't interested in reading the Twisted Tale stories at all. So I read this just because Mulan is one of, once again, one of my favorite stories of Disney that they have done. And I'm like, ah. It's Mulan, I kind of I kind of have to read this. And the problem for this story is what if Mulan had to go into the underworld? In this story, it starts off, instead of her identity being revealed, Shang ends up getting hit with an arrow and almost dying. So she has to go into the underworld and convince King Yama to not have him pass on to the next life. She has to bring him back to our world so he can save the day. And I absolutely love this story. And the reason why like I'm having it change my perspective on something was first of all, read the Twisted Tale stories. They're really not that bad. They're just fan fiction in physical format. And also, I didn't really like stories that dealt so much with hidden identity. Yeah, sure, spy stories, they can pass because that's kind of what they're about. But keeping our identity secret, miscommunication, that sort of thing that's like being the tension of the story, I wasn't liking that. This handled it very well because Mulan's identity never ended up being revealed, so she has to go through the majority of the story still pretending that she's Ping, and I think that's just, it was handled so well, and I really do love it. So yes, this changed my opinion on Twisted Tales and like hidden identities. Question number 11, Rapunzel's hair. What is a book or series that has a magic system you find fascinating? Not so much a book, but a manga series, and that's Kahetu Hit My Reborn or KHR. Once again, I only have volume three. I don't know what happened to volume one, but I am just, I, I love this magic system so much. I really, mangas are really more of a power system than a magic system. I've done a video on this, like giving the powers in this book to other characters in other novels, but no one really watched that. <laughs> But just in this, this story is amazing and wonderful. The magic system in this is your dying will. You're taking your last regret and bringing it into physical formation. Like you have a fire. It doesn't always burn like normal fire, but it's just, it has the appearance of fire. So you have different types of flames. There's the sky flame, the rain flame, the storm flame. I personally would have a storm flame. I think that's awesome. But like different regrets, different types of wills. That's your dying will. That's your dying emotion. That is what you can use as actual power in this universe. And I think it's so cool and so fascinating. And the idea of like having regret be the thing that fuels you forward is so cool. And I'm just, I keep saying that because I love this series so much. The first arc in this is very cringy because it started off as a comedy and Japan is really into slapstick, especially like this is an old 90s manga slapstick was everything. And I'm like, eh, eh, but get past the first arc. It's beautiful and I love it. Question number 12, Eugene's death. What is a book with a plot twist you still talk about to this day? I think one of us is lying. Now, I kind of like, this book wasn't the most amazing story in the world, but the plot twist in this, like the big reveal at the end, my problem is I can't really tell the difference between a big reveal and a plot twist. This is a murder mystery. Five kids walk into detention and only four make it out alive. And the question is, who is the one to blame? Because they all have motive for killing this one guy. And the reveal at the end is just amazing. I, again, I don't really know the difference between a reveal and a plot twist. So I'm saying this is the one I'm talking about because I just, I love it so much. 
question number 13, The Kiss. What is a book with the romance that you love? Now, a uh, new one for this, actually. This is How You Lose a Time War. I just read this book. It is incredibly short, so I picked it up an audiobook and finished it in a day. This is a story of two women as they travel through time trying to beat each other out, each one working for a different organization, different time branch. They're trying to make sure that their reality is the one that comes, and one of them is like all nature-based, and look, it's the garden. The other one's all like techno feature, and as they battle through time together, they fall in love, and I just, it's, it's amazing. Like, I don't like romance, but this one's amazing. Question number 14, happily ever after. What is a book that ended the way you wanted it to? Now, I had a hard time picking this because I have no clue how any book's ever gonna end, but I finally, I finally settled on one, and that is the Welcome to Night Vale novels. This is following the town of Night Vale, but this isn't told through the format of the podcast. This isn't told through the radio show. This is just two civilians as they realize, hey, uh, there's this guy walking around town who no one can remember the face of, no one can remember the name of, and the only thing that we know about him is the fact that he hands out pieces of paper that say King City on it. So these two characters have to go and find King City because they think they have some sort of connection or they have some sort of thing with this character no one can remember. So it's amazing, it's spoopy, it's wonderful. This definitely leans way off the horror and more just the unsettling aspect that Nightville is known for. And I loved it so much. And the ending of this is amazing because like, I was like thinking about it, I'm like, hey, um, Night Vale is really weird, like in every aspect. So this, the way that this ended totally fit in with the way Night Vale works. And I loved it so much. I, I can't talk about anything in this. But just, it has a great female-female friendship. Like, they're, they're different ages, and they're, they just grow so close together. And like, yes, this is, we, we can be friends. We can work together. We can do this. And I love it so much. And the last question, question number 15, Wind in My Hair. What is a sequel you absolutely love? So I picked basically anything from the Madness Chase series. Madness Chase is one of the companion series to Percy Jackson. It's set in the same universe, but this one follows the Norse deities. Book two in this, I fell in love with because our, one of the characters that we meet in book two, this is not book two, I'm sorry, I only pulled book one, but in book two you meet Alex Fierro who ends up being Magnus' love interest and Alex is gender fluid and then Magnus is like, hey, um, you, we met because you cut off my head and I'm I'm very much infatuated with you, and I think it's so cute and adorable. The characters live in Valhalla, which is the Norse afterlife training warriors for Ragnarok, so people die there all the time, and then they come back to life a couple hours later, and it's just a comedy, and this is great and amazing, and book two really works it out, because Alex ends up being related to one of our side characters, and it, it I, yeah, I love it so much. So yeah, that has been the Tangled Book Tag. I know, I know there was a lot of questions. I'm sorry I kept talking. Thank you guys all so much for watching. If you have done a lot of tags recently, so if you have any suggestions on any other type of video you want to see from me, please leave that down in the comment section down below. While you're there, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And as always, good night, good evening, and good morning, everybody.